Come on, Rain. Come on, come this way. Come on over to my house. Come on. Good morning, everybody. This is Laney with Camp Joy Farms. We didn't get a bit of that rain yesterday. And that was just one system that was on one side of my house. I walked out there later because I heard thunder and lightning and there was a big system on the other side of our house, the other horizon. And I could see the rain coming down out of the system. I could see that it was pouring wherever that was, just a few miles away. And I was like, please come this way. Nothing, we got nothing. Maybe that one will come over here. And I wish one of them would come over here. They're calling today for some afternoon showers and I'm walking out here this morning. It's about seven o'clock in the morning and there's already some clouds just all around. So it doesn't look like it's gonna rain right off the bat, but it looks like it wants to rain today. So. I have some friends coming in a little while to buy some vegetables and we'll probably just visit. So I wanted to go ahead and come out here this morning and do a quick garden tour. Just an impromptu garden tour. I didn't come out here and prep anything. I didn't come out here and clean up anything. It's kind of a, it is what it is garden tour because this is kind of what it looks like for my garden when you're gardening in South Louisiana and the heat has set in and the lack of rain has set in. I, people around me have gotten rain. I, I just kind of, I'm in a weird situation where just sometimes it rains all around me and it just won't rain here at my house. And then I'll get a big, big rain at some point that'll really just make things spring forth. My corn desperately needs it right now but I'm missing those rains right now. They're just going all around me. So I'm hoping that this afternoon, even if it's a half inch, I'll get something, just anything will be great. I'm just gonna start here in the lower garden, which is now starting to get kind of overrun with weeds again. I really just, if I could just run a push more down these little aisles, it would make me feel better, but that is what it is right now and I don't have a push more. So, well, I clicked my camera on I was gonna start my tour by showing you my very first row, which is my Cherokee purple tomatoes. And I realize on my fourth bush here, well, third and fourth bush, I have a hornworm that's decided to get on them. Now I have been really, really checking these Cherokee purple tomatoes to make sure I don't get hornworms. But of course, this morning, one has gotten to it. And not only that, let me step around here. I can't find it right now. I cut off my camera and was looking for it. I can't find it. There's the telltale sign of the feces on the ground. So it's here, but it's moved a little bit and I just don't see it this morning. But also the lovely wasp that have decided to get on certain tomatoes, not all the tomatoes that will be growing in that area. They'll just set upon one tomato and do their work. And it is so aggravating. That's what's going on right now in the heat of this summer is just my plants are being beset by different things. And you know what? I'm doing the best I can, but some of it, I'm just giving over to it because it's just very, um, there's only one me. <laughs> and I did plant three big gardens and some things I'm just having to say, um, I can't handle. I can't seem to get a leg up on, but I'm trying. This right here is the Ashley cucumbers that I planted here, there, and yonder all throughout my garden. I have some more there. Wherever I had a blank space, I kind of put these cucumbers and I planted them later than the others. But I've noticed when I walked out here this morning, there's one hanging there. And I could see this one while I was standing here too. 
So they are starting to really put off cucumbers now. I'm gonna come out here in a minute and see what I can find. All my flowers have started blooming and I just, I love it. Now these beans along this trellis, they haven't gotten extremely thick or anything, but it's the Blue Shack of Maxins and they do put off a lot of pods. I have a lot of pods that I've been coming out here and picking. They have pods all down in there. And I'm just simply saving seeds from these. Not worried about eating them. I'm just simply letting them dry up and saving seeds. And I'm gonna try to really get those used to growing here. It's a bean that's from mostly up north to plant it here in this humid, hot South Louisiana. It's not thriving, but it will after I save seeds and replant it again, hopefully, and get it used to my area. In the front, I planted some little burpees beans that I really haven't paid attention to too much. Some look okay, some don't. That's the good, bad, and ugly of this garden. Uh, and probably from here on out, because of the heat, I just, I just can't get out here and kill myself during the day. It's just too hot. I have some little peppers growing right here and they've done okay, but they're just little small bullnose bell peppers, which come to realize just means they're small. This is my tomatillo plant that hasn't done anything. I've got a, like a small little tomatillo there and I've got tons of smaller ones on here, but they have not matured. And I was watching someone else's video the other day and they said their tomatillo plant was just doing nothing. I've never grown it before. I have no idea what to expect. I did get on my computer last night just to kind of look it up and it says, you know, it's a 70 to 80 day maturity, which that time has passed right now. It's about that time and I'm not seeing it thriving. So I don't know if I'm gonna get anything out of those. Here's my Italian heirloom tomatoes. My tomato bushes, they all look a little sad right now. Some of them need a little pruning. Some of them are just kind of, the wind has just done a, a number on them. I've had to stake them up several times. Not very impressive to look at right now, but I've picked a lot of the tomatoes off of there. So I'm happy with the, the production I've gotten off of them. And most of them have either been eaten or they're in my house right now. Now at the back of my garden, I have this John Hawk heirloom corn that I got from Clemson University. Some of it is very tall. I would guess right now that some of my tallest corn over there, one of these few stalks is about at least 10 foot tall, if not taller. Some of these other ones, they're all different uh, heights. This corn has been very sporadic. I planted about 39 seeds uh, probably now I'll be lucky if I have 20 plants that have made it through the germination, through the wind, through the bugs, just everything. Um, I've had some of them that completely snapped in two, so I had to stake them up and tie them off because they're so tall and spindly, they just can't handle the wind very well. They have been setting up pretty good root systems lately, so I feel a lot better about them. Um, some of the stalks have not really made hardly any ears of corn, but uh, some of them have, but they're not pollinated yet. They're not, they're not near about ready. My goal with this corn is to just have some of it, just some of the um, ears fully form. I'd like to let some of it dry so that I can save seeds. I'm really just, I planted a few things in my garden a few things like this simply to see how the seeds would grow because I had some heirloom seeds that I had ordered from different places and I'm really just planting them kind of as novelties uh, to save seeds if I can and to kind of propagate those varieties for my area. I didn't really expect them to fully thrive here not having grown here before but I feel like I can propagate them in time. Save some seeds. I only started with 50 seeds and now, you know, I barely have any. I just have a few in the house. But if I can get a few hundred off of some of these ears, then that's a whole different ball game. So in this upper garden, I did plant a big long row 
of speckled purple hole peas, which immediately after they were coming up, got set upon by, I think, a rabbit. This is what's left of them, but they're, they're looking okay. But the first ones that I planted, especially right down here, they just, these little ones, they just got chewed on and their tops taken off by what I'm pretty sure was a rabbit. Some of them at the other end, the same thing. So hopefully they'll grow and give me some peas to shell, but we shall see. These have not been my best things. These Jimmy Nardello peppers, they're supposed to go from green to kind of red, but they kind of just go to an ugly orange color and then maybe eventually turn red. And by that point, I don't even really want to eat them. They just don't look that great. These are the sheep nose pimento peppers that are finally deciding to turn red after many, many months. So I'm gonna come out here and just kind of maybe grab those before these wasps and all get them. These are my Satsuma long green eggplants. And they're producing pretty good. They're producing pretty good. But this particular plant right here had a huge hornworm in it a couple of days ago and I had to rescue it so I lost a bunch of the fruit off of it because it just takes a little bite out of each fruit. My Mississippi purple hole peas are looking wonderful. Those just grow so good in South Louisiana and that's why I have them here. They, they grow in just about any kind of soil and they're just uh, about a week and a half or so away from being able to pick. They've set a lot of pods. The pods are sticking up right now, but they're still small. And so I'll be getting those soon. My squash, my yellow crookneck squash. I just love the crookneck squash. I just do. The old timey squash, that's what I like to eat. And these plants have done so well for me. I've harvested a lot of squash off of them. They're a little bit tired right now. They're a little bit yellow looking. I need to come through with some fertilizer, but the bees are working hard in here this morning. The bees are just really getting after those flowers. And I know I'm still gonna have a lot more to go on these squash because they're just full of blooms. The bees are going at them, so they're not done yet. So I'm gonna have a whole lot of those left. I put up these T-post and string in the last, I would say, 50 feet of this garden. And I intended to plant nothing but King of the Garden lima beans, which I planted a few. And they didn't germinate extremely well, but a few came up. But they immediately started getting the rusty leaves and looking like they have some soil-borne diseases on them. So I'm just stopping those plans. I'm gonna come in here in the next day or so with a lot of fertilizer maybe to probably today since it may rain this afternoon I might do that put a little fertilizer here and then I'm gonna plant some seeds that I just got but I'm gonna see if they work here they're called Texas longhorn field peas but they're a climbing field pea that needs trellising and they're supposed to thrive in hot weather and whatever kind of soil and so I'm gonna see if they'll do here if you know anything, if you've grown Texas Longhorn field peas, please let me know. Any information I could get about some of these seeds that I haven't grown before, I'd appreciate. This is my Claude Brown Yellow Giant. Big old tomato that I'm growing. Supposed to get up to about three pounds. I'm gonna be taking it off the vine pretty soon because it's starting to turn yellow. I don't want bugs to get at it and just tear it up and um, I'm really curious to see how those taste. I'm gonna let it finish inside the house, I believe. These are Ashley cucumbers, they're everywhere. This is my VB Russian paste tomato plant. I got the seeds free from Sand Hill Preservation Center when I made an order one time. And so far these tomatoes are doing really well. And I ate one for supper the other night and it was very, very good. These are my dragon's egg cucumbers. They've been just really producing, really thriving. They're small like that when you pick them, but I'm growing this one next to it to save seeds. I'm letting one of them just grow, grow, grow. So it's getting really big. 
these are early girl tomatoes and they've done really really well they've been very very productive but um as with everything they're getting a little bit tired looking right now these are my mexico midget tomatoes the gift that just keeps on giving they just keep on turning red and ripening and doing so good all i can say is i'm sorry look at these sad looking blue lake pole beans i have gotten a ton of pole beans off of them we i've got a lot put in the freezer in there but the vine's so heavy that now they're drooping and they're kind of dying back but they also have lots of blooms on them so i'll end up with a big push of them again but right now um we've just shook hands and agreed to be friends <laughs> i'm just kind of letting them go right now i'll have to get back to them later oh goodness i see some of them that really could be picked right now i'm gonna have to carve out some time maybe this afternoon to come pick some more of those these are the marglobe tomatoes now these bushes have done really good and been really healthy probably the best looking bushes out of all my bushes and there's still plenty of tomatoes up in there you just have to get down where i can show them but there's lots of tomatoes all up in there these are my ideal market pole beans that got blown over in that storm they're they're back up now but um they're kind of tired right now too but i do have a lot of them in the freezer same situation with the blue lake pole beans we'll get back to them later i'm down in my lower garden now and my little tomato alley has been very productive it's been very productive these are the sweetie tomatoes they're all up in there just picked those two and now i already have some ready to pick again um they've been very productive but i've also of course these are the yellow pears that got attacked by hornworms i've had to really stay on hornworm watch i'm just going to do a quick walkthrough it's, it's really just impossible to show you every little plant and take forever to talk about it i know it just kind of need the general overview these are the kellogg's breakfast tomato plants and I've gotten a few tomatoes off of them. They're not extremely productive. These are all the sun sugar cherry tomatoes, which are beautiful. They're a beautiful cherry tomato. There's some growing up in my cucumber plants, but uh, they're a beautiful cherry tomato and they are very prolific. If you need a good tomato to grow, they're very prolific. These are the Eagleheart yellow cherry tomatoes. They kind of look like the sun sugars. They're just smaller. But um, I'm telling you what, the hornworms love these too. They just got into these. They're probably still in these. I have done so much searching though. I don't know what else to do. These are my Paul Robesons that the wasps are starting to love. I picked a bunch off of there yesterday. I just took them. If I don't go ahead and take them, as soon as they start turning, they just get attacked. So... That's the theme of my whole video today is take it before it gets attacked. <laughs> do what you got to do before it all gets attacked. This is my super sweet 100 cherry tomatoes and they've done really well too. They they seem to be very prolific and they are delicious. This is my robe mountain tommy toe tomatoes, which kind of make a, a saladette sized tomato. I've had some extreme hornworm attention paid to these two by the hornworms and um i'm gonna tell you i wish there was just some type of of way that you could just spot all these hornworms and get rid of them so much easier it really just wastes your time you know it wastes your time to worry about them i haven't done the weeding i need to do i haven't done the care i need to do on all my plants because i've literally been sitting on buckets in front of plants trying to find hornworms because if i don't i lose everything this 50 foot row that's empty used to be my cherokee wax beans i took them out this needs to be weeded and cultivated and something else put in here i haven't done that yet i've got this row here same situation this was a long row it went all the way down to the other end it was a, about a 95 foot row of momentum bush beans which i'm gonna think really twice about ever growing again in such a big capacity 
I grew them last year. I grew them in my upper garden last year, just a few feet, maybe 15 feet, and they did really good. So I committed to this whole double planted row of them this year for my bean production. And they were probably the worst beans I planted. They didn't germinate well. I had to replant. And then they just, they gave me one good push. I had like maybe two decent little harvest out of them. And then they just went to mush. Um, they just didn't do good. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm disappointed in those seeds and I'm not going to invest a whole lot of growing space into growing them again. I don't like to waste seeds, so at some point I will stick them somewhere, just 10 or 15 feet here, there, yonder, to give me just some green beans for food. But I'm not going to waste, especially uh, 190 feet of row space to those green beans ever again. Uh, I've got okra kind of planted in the middle of it that's going to start doing a lot better now that the bush beans are out of the way. These are my long green improved cucumbers. I just have them growing on the ground, but they have uh, really been very steady. I'll pick and pretty much pick them through, and then in just a couple of days, they're all back. So just a regular long green cucumber. I also got those seeds at the co-op, and they also grow really good in this area. These are my zipper cream and black eyed peas that I planted together on accident, but they're all coming due. They are setting pods. I have lots of blooms and probably gonna have some peas that'll be ready to pick maybe even later this week. These are the purple hull peas, double planted row, about a 90 something foot row. And they have set pods as well and they will be ready to pick here in the next week or so. Got a lot of pods on there. Purple hole peas set their pods to the top of the plant, thank goodness, usually. I mean, you have to dig down sometimes. Once they get heavy, they'll fall. But for the most part, they set them on the top of the plant and that helps so much. As you know, I have four rows of candy corn that has taken a beating by the last storm system that I had come through here. And most of them have stood back up for the most part. I never ended up being able to get back here and really work to stand them up perfectly. I really need to be harvesting this corn right now, I think. A lot of it is ready to harvest. Um, once my company leaves today, I may just have to suck it up and get out here in the heat and get some of it harvested before these possible thunderstorms come this evening. I said I would tell the good, bad, and the ugly. Well, this might be one of the the ugly is I've had, uh, of course, it's kind of beset by worms at this point. Just those worms that get in the top of your corn. They don't bother me when you go to, to shuck your corn ear. You just simply cut off that top part and the rest of the ear is fine. So they don't really bother me. Now from a selling perspective though, I don't want it to be where, oh, I bought a bunch of corn from Laney but it had worms in it because people expect, I guess, you know, to pull back that, that shuck and find a beautiful ear of corn there. I don't know that every ear is like that, but you really don't know until you pull it back. What I may end up doing, and it's going to be a lot of work, but what I may end up doing is just harvesting this, uh, checking out each one as I open it up, and dealing with it as it is. I may end up going ahead and blanching some and freezing some as corn on the cob. I may go ahead and just take a knife and scrape the ears and freeze that in bags to sell as just fresh corn off the cob. I love it that way. That's usually how I do it when I cook it. I just do the knife, I take it off the cob. I do it in a black iron skillet with just a little bit of butter maybe a little bit of milk, some salt and pepper, and just make some home cream style corn. I love it that way. And I may just go ahead and sell it that way. I hate to sell a bunch of ears of corn to someone and then they'd be disappointed because they have to deal with the, the worm in it. And I hate to tell someone, um, oh, if you have worms, just cut the worms off. <laughs> it's just from a sales point of view and, and my first time selling corn, I don't know that I want that 
to be the situation. So I may just process it and sell it in some other ways. Be a little more work for me, but it's something I think I can get done and, and get taken care of. Just trying to juggle everything. The good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> just trying to be honest with you about where I'm at with this corn. I'm gonna go along this back row really quick first. These are my watermelon plants and they are spreading out and doing good. I don't know if I have a watermelon on that one, but I am starting to get watermelons. These are black diamond watermelons. Finally starting to have some production with these. They'll get about 25 pounds or so whenever they get mature. And so I'm looking forward to having some of these. I wish they would be ready for 4th of July, but I'm not really seeing it right now. But that's okay. That's okay. They're coming along. They're better than they were. They're starting to, to look healthy. And so I'm just going to take what I can get out of these. I'm finally starting to get some little sugar cube cantaloupes. Finally starting to get a few of those on these bushes. So I'm excited about that. Down here are the National Pickling Cucumbers, which they have been very prolific as well. They did good for me the first time I ever planted them. So they've just, they're so reliable. They're looking a little bit tired right now, a little bit browning and yellow, but they've done so well for me. There's one of those Ashley cucumbers hiding under there. So I guess the Ashley ones are, are starting to churn it out. These are my Dr. Weish's tomatoes. They're late bloomers because they just about died and I had to bring them back. But they've got tomatoes on them now. So hopefully if I can keep them going, I'll get some of those beautiful yellow heirloom tomatoes. Starting to get a few, a few of the Florida high bush eggplants. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got five of these bushes. Just starting now to get those. These are the little Turkish orange eggplants that I was showing you on another video. They just get so small though. They're so small. <laughs> All along this row are my gray zucchinis and they have done really well. Right now, they don't, there's not a lot out here to pick right now, but um, they have done really well. I'm very proud of them. I think some of these plants are getting a little tired. They've kind of shot their wad. <laughs> they need to regroup, maybe get a little fertilizer, and then they'll start putting off more and more. But uh, they're getting a little tired looking right now. And mama's been tired too. Mama's been hot, not wanting to get out here in this heat. So, we just need to kind of regroup. I'm kind of at that point now. I need to, I need to regroup. Walking over here across the beach to Richard's garden. I'm just quickly wrap this tour up because I need to go in and cook breakfast. But I wanted to show you all three gardens in this tour. This, of course, is my Mosby prolific corn. It's a later uh, maturing variety. It's about a 100-day corn, whereas that candy corn is about an 80-day corn. So this corn is a little bit behind it. But all in all, considering the storms we've had, it did well during those last storms, so it must be setting a pretty good root system. It's tasseling really good. What I'm not seeing yet is any ear production. I don't know that I've seen any ears yet on this corn, but it's looking okay and it's looking healthy and I keep having to tell myself to just remember that it takes longer. <laughs> it just takes longer. And 20 days doesn't seem like much until you're gardening and you know to wait 20 days on something to develop when you're gardening can seem to just take forever. Those gardens over there have dedicated things on each row. Over here it's a little bit more messy looking but there's still a lot growing. These two rows I have to get up closer for you to see. But this is where I planted the Ford Hook Gym cantaloupes. 
These Ford Hook Jim cantaloupes that I planted are just starting to take off. They're just everywhere. I have, there's one there. There's one there. They're just starting to take off and, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Those are an heirloom cantaloupe that is supposed to taste so good. And I think I have more. Oh yeah, I have more down in there. More there. They're just everywhere. And I'm so excited. Just so excited. Just every one of these bushes has multiple Ford Hook gems on them. So these beans are tender green bush beans. They're pretty much done. We've picked them over. They're starting to yellow and, and just get run down looking. But I decided the other day, first of all, for weed suppression, I'm just going to leave them there. But second of all, I'm just going to let them go until they dry and try to save a bunch of seeds from these as well. Um, these are uh, an heirloom seed. These tender green seeds are and these grow really well. They're just, a, a, they get tall and they grow and they have good production. So I have plenty of the seeds in my house. I really don't have to save the seeds from these because I have a ton of them. But rather than just pull them up and let the weeds take over right now, I think I'm just gonna let them go and I'm gonna save seeds from them. I'm trying to figure the best things to do at this point to save my energy and to um, keep my seed bank going. These Thelma Sanders winter squash are everywhere. <laughs> and as I read the reviews on the internet, it seems like everybody says that, that grows these. They're just everywhere. They are prolific. They grow well. They don't seem to care about soil. They'll just grow in any kind of soil. Another one out there. And supposedly, they taste delicious. My Cuban L peppers have done wonderful. Uh, people don't really know what they are sometimes. I wanted to kind of grow them for myself because I just wanted to try them. And I've been stuffing them and making recipes and they taste really good. But what I do is when people come and buy things from me, I love to give a little lanyard. Give them a little something to take home with them. A little land yap and that's what I've been giving them is keeping out peppers so it's been working out good these are the Atkinson tomatoes and they have grown so good look at that bush it's just full of tomatoes just full of them I will grow these again in a heartbeat these uh, bushes are just full of tomatoes and I picked a lot of them I have a lot of them in my house right now this row is my cucumber row, and I have slicer and bayet alpha cucumbers. I still don't really know which is which, but both of them have been producing wonderful. If I dug around right now, I could find a bunch of them. Both of them have been producing wonderful, so can't complain. They've been doing great. These right here have been doing great as well, and these are the cocozel zucchinis. All down this row is cocozel zucchinis. Now I came through yesterday and picked a bunch. So I don't know if I really have one to show you. I'm sure I have a small one in here somewhere. Well, I missed this one. This is a big one, but that's a cocozel zucchini. It's beautiful and they taste really, really good. These are definitely worth growing if you can um, get the seeds. I can't remember exactly where I got the Cocozel seeds from, but um, they're available just anywhere if you Google it. Now this last back side of my garden, if you were coming through here and didn't know what you were looking at, you would think that is a pile of mess there. But it's watermelons. It's my Wilson Sweet watermelon vines. These are the melons. I just wasn't sure if I were even gonna make it. But boy, when they turned the corner, they turned it and started running. Let me see if I can get over here and just show you at least one or two of them that are growing. 
Here's one right here. Well, there's a small one. Small one right there. But there's a larger one right there. These get a little bit bigger than a bowling ball. They're just a beautiful old-timey melon. They're an heirloom melon. They do have seeds. There's one right there. I see another one right there. They're all hidden up in the grass, so you have to find them. But uh, well, I see another one hiding right there. It's hiding, but I see it. They have seeds. I don't grow any seedless watermelons. I know people love them, and I know people sometimes don't want to bother with seeds. Uh, but even when you grow a seedless watermelon, you have to grow a pollinator to go with it, so you have to grow another type anyway. So you're going to end up growing a watermelon with seeds anyway, from what I understand, even if you're trying to grow a seedless one, so that you'll have that pollinator melon to go with it. But um, I just like to grow the kind that tastes really good to me, and these Wilson Sweets are just very good to me. I'm hoping the Black Diamonds that I'm growing are going to come out good. Uh, where I purchased them in Arkansas, the man told me that they were what they love to grow up there. So I'm going to try it and see. So this is Richard's garden. This is my last garden over here. And it's got a lot of different things in it. I'm going to do a video here shortly and just kind of discuss my future plans and what I've learned from this year, what I might change. And this garden is definitely going to kind of be restructured a little bit, but I think it's going to make it easier on me, easier on maintenance, and trying to grow things where they seem the most happy. That's my goal, is to try to figure out where things seem the most happy and just do that. Just grow things where they want to be grown. And I can tell you, I'll give you a sneak preview that this may become, this garden, this 30, I don't know, 50 feet by 100 something feet garden may just become a big, huge melon patch next year because the melons and all seem to love it back here and I can just kind of let them go. But I'm going to analyze everything. I, I'm going to just see how it goes and... Um, course we've got to see how it finishes out too. I haven't harvested any of these melons yet. I haven't harvested any of these Thelma Sanders yet. So we're just going to have to see how it goes. I hope you enjoyed this kind of quick tour. It's just kind of a quick walkthrough. I didn't get too detailed with any particular plant, but there's just so much to see when you have three gardens. And I would almost just as soon do a, a tour of all three so that it doesn't get confusing and so that there's not too many videos that are too long. I think just quick overviews are good sometimes. It kind of gives gives you an idea of what I'm doing every day, gives you an idea of the weather, gives you an idea of how things are coming. And hopefully, hopefully this Mosby prolific corn will just start putting off ears soon. I think I'm seeing one right now. I'm looking over here right now as I'm on the camera and I think I see an ear coming off. I'm gonna walk over there and check it. But hopefully, I can win the battle with the hornworms. Oh, it's just so disheartening to lose beautiful tomato plants to hornworms. It's just so disheartening. Um, Cause they just eat. They don't really serve a purpose to me. They just eat. If they would come eat mosquitoes and stuff, that'd be fine. But they just eat. Yes. Yes. There we go. I could see the little red fronds on it from across the garden. So, ear production has begun on the Mosby prolific corn. I wanna make that announcement. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I have had a lot of anxiety about my corn here lately. <laughs> what do I not have anxiety about? <laughs> it's just the nature of it. It's kinda of like these are your babies and you, you do everything you can to get them to grow. And then sometimes you just worry that you've kind of carried them over a threshold and dropped them. <laughs> and sometimes the weather can just come batter them and take them down or the hornworms and all. So anyway, I'm standing in this cornfield, this Mosby prolific corn, because just seeing that one little ear growing has given me some hope. I'm happy. Uh, I just feel like 
if the ear production on here can start and in the next 20 days or so, I may be looking at, at harvesting those. And this Mosby prolific corn is so good. It's a white corn, the ears get huge and it's just a beautiful corn and it's delicious. So I really did not want to have a bad corn set this year. I wanted to really have good production. The candy corn had just given me anxiety because it was so beautiful until that storm hit it. And now to me, it's just not been the same. So I'm trying to do damage control. I might just go ahead and harvest and do the best I can with what's on there rather than waiting for these big, beautiful, perfect ears to form. I, I just don't know if that's gonna happen. I don't wanna give up on things too early, but I also try to be realistic. So I do a lot of little testing. I walk around and kind of take a peek at the ears, but um, I don't know. I'm thinking it needs to, to come out of there. But anyway, hopefully the Mosby Prolific will hang in there and be really good ears. And then hopefully I can get some seed stock off of that John Hawk corn. There's always something to hope for, and there's always something beautiful to look at, even in a garden when you have a lot of weeds and when you have things attacking your plants. It's still pretty, it's still beautiful, and it still just lifts my heart up to come outside and get to enjoy this. I get to enjoy this all the time, and it just lifts my heart up and gives me so much hope. This is Lainey from Camp Joy Farms. I'll give another tour in a week or so. We'll see how things are going. Thank you so much for joining me. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye. Update. About 24 hours after those other showers missed us, we finally got one that hit us. It's a slow rain. It looks like it's going to be raining for a while, which is exactly, exactly what my crops need. So this is wonderful. It can do this all evening. Fine with me.